as a person who is involved, her passion, everything she does is about trading. So she, there's no better person to teach us today, about, especially as Christians, the importance and the place of altars and covenants we make with God in the place of, of our businesses, in the, our workplaces, in our in those businesses which we said. So we are very privileged to have you, Doreen, together with your husband, um, Mr. Tony Rubombora. I know the whole family is in business. I'm sure many of them or some of them may be on call. So we welcome you as you speak to us, as you inspire us in this area of altars and covenants in the place of our workplace. Thank you so much. You are welcome. You can come on, take it from here. Thank you so much, Aunt Phoebe, uh, for welcoming me. And, and we give honor and glory for this morning. Um, Aunt Phoebe uh, introduced me. I'm Doreen Rubombora. I'm married to Tony Rubombora. We've been married now for better two years. We have six children. Five of them are biological. One is a son in love. And we also have two grandchildren. Um, and Phoebe asked us, uh, Tony and I, to share our story on how we, we've been sustaining, how we built an altar and how we have uh, been sustaining it in our business. And also she mentioned that we talk about how this has benefited us. Uh, Tony asked me to present, but he's also here with, to present on both our behalf, but he's also here with me and he will be interjecting uh, as and when he needs to do so. Uh, let me see if I'm able to share the screen. So we are going to uh, share about altars and uh, covenants in the workplace. Um, uh, we are telling this story because of the experience that we have gone through uh, as uh, we raised an altar in, in our workplace. Uh, uh, Tony, who uh, we are, we, we, we both of us are in business. Uh, Tony runs Eagle Air and I run Bethel Estates, but we started off together. And uh, because we started together, most of the experiences that we have gone through, we have shared. That's why Tony says that I can talk on, on our behalf. I'll start by saying that. There is a time when we left this country and went to work outside. One thing that I remember is when I said that he does not want to live and work outside of this country. He wanted to come back to work in this country where he is supposed to be. And uh, we put that into prayer. And because the only way of coming back here was to come back and employ ourselves, as a couple, we raised an altar where we continually asked God to make a way of bringing us back uh, to the country and to start a business. I remember we had a, a, fellow, a group we used to fellowship with 
at All Saints Cathedral in Nairobi. And that group would pray with us. And uh, there is a time when after our fellowship in the evening, we went back home and then we received, Tony receives a call, which was actually like an answered prayer where his friends were telling him, you know what? We need to start a business in, in Uganda. And immediately we knew this is what, it's, it's like it's from God. And uh, to tie in with what we are going to talk about today, it is something that our altars are something that actually bring us into understanding what God wants from us. Now, before we, um, I hope you are hearing me. If you are not hearing me, please let me know. Yes, we yeah. are you loud and clear. Okay. Okay. We, you break, yeah. but we are hearing you. But you can come nearer the mic. Okay. Um, we have had limited time to prepare for this talk. Uh, but uh, we, we will share as the Lord leads us. Uh, um, we will start by finding out uh, what altars are. Um, an altar is a place where the physical and the spiritual meet. And there is an exchange between, between God and man, and for those who do not know our God, who is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jacob, they have their own gods where they also go to meet with them. It is also a place of sacrifice. It's a high place. It is as a place where us as human beings express our, our gratitude towards God or any other deity in case for, of those who do not worship our God. The word altar was taken from the Latin word called alterium, which means a high place. So many times, when we look at the altars, like in our churches, they are raised, but an altar is not necessarily physical. It also is spiritual. We see the first altar recorded in the Hebrew Bible that we erected by Noah. Noah, uh, this is in Genesis chapter eight, verse 20. When Noah left the ark, he raised an altar in gratitude, having been saved from the floods, him and his family and all the creatures that God asked him to, to put in the ark. And we remember that when Noah raised that altar, God was pleased with, uh, with, with what he, he did and he, and he declared that he will never um, destroy humanity using the flood. And there was that sign of the rainbow, which we all know about. We also know that altars have been erected by Abraham, by Isaac, by Jacob, by Moses. And there's a lot that Moses wrote about the altars that we can use and we can follow. A covenant on the other hand, is a binding agreement that is made between two entities. Covenants are made in our marriage relationships, in friendships, and the most important is our covenant between God and man. We know in the olden days when we had 
people making covenants using blood, where they would put blood on a berry, on a on a coffee berry, and cut each other. And they and and I remember people saying that if you broke that covenant, something bad would happen to you. But then we have the covenant that God made with us through Jesus, the Lamb of God, who died on the cross for us, and through Him we are eternally uh, in relationship with God. Silver and gold belong to God. In heaven, so Lucifer existed and he was thrown out and he came to earth. Now, Lucifer, who came to earth, tries to mirror what God does and what God's original plan for us was. Whereas they are altars on which we worship our living God, but they are also altars where those who believe in Satanism are also faithful to and worship him. And of course, uh, Satan pretends to give them wealth, but his wealth we know is not authentic because more, many times it involves the killing and the stealing and the destroying. We have heard stories of people who sacrifice their children when they are setting up businesses. These are evil altars and they can only lead to suffering later on. We may see such people as prospering, but we do not know what they are going through. So of course, on the other hand, God also demands us to raise an altar. Okay, let's not say demands, but we also need to raise our altars because we live in a world where this especially sphere of business is controlled by the, the Satanists and it come, and we are in competition with them. So in order for us to be able to sustain ourselves in this uh, sphere, we need to raise altars. And these altars are supposed to enable us to, to do business in the right way. Now, we have to, when we, we raise an altar, we have to make a sacrifice. And the sacrifice we make on this altar is through our praise, we give thanks, through um, when we raise an altar to God, we raise a sacrifice in form of time, we have to give God time. And also we have to make physical offerings in form of what he has given us, our time. There, there is an, uh, the, uh, the ethic of managing a company and this involves several things. One of them, as I've just mentioned, is we have to, when you do good business in God's way, we are required to give time, but also we are, we are, we are also required to be good custodians of the people and things that God has given us that we, are, that we manage. For instance, we should recognize that Employees are children of God. And by us having those people work in the company that God has given us to be custodians of, we have to sacrifice our power as custodians and do what we do in God's way. For instance, we are not supposed to mistreat our employees at the same time, we are also not supposed to withhold justice from them. We cannot take advantage of our subordinates. Uh, there are times when people talk about 
sexual harassment. We are not supposed as Christians to do that. We are not supposed to steal from the company by diverting company money. We must account for all money. We should not apply uneven scales because God does not like us doing such things. Such things, if we did them, they would hinder our blessings and also defile the altar that we raise, we have risen, uh, we have risen towards God in our places of work. Because we know that Satan brings about a, a counterfeit, is a counterfeit. When he brings up altars which are contrary to us, we should always look out for things that will try to interfere with our altars. We know in the business world, for us who have been in the business world, we have seen how some people actually build altars in, the, in, in their places of, of business. We, as in Uganda, we have seen those who, who worship foreign gods, who seek to dominate the sphere of business, how, risen, who, how they raise altars, which are visible to us, where you see gods outside people's offices, we see gods inside people's businesses. When you enter, you are being served, but on even where the self is, you see a god sitting there. So this is the, the place, these are the people whom we serve with in the business world. And if you are transacting with such people, you need to be aware of it. And you know that you have to raise an altar to your God that will also be able to counteract those altars that have been risen by these other entities. Uh, in their workplaces. Now, I'll give a, a brief background of uh, Ego Air. Um, Ego Air uh, was incorporated in June 1994, and uh, this past month, we celebrated a 28 years of service. Now, as I told you, we started praying that we might come back to you uh, to we might come back to Uganda to raise to start a business. And out of that prayer, Ego Air was born. And the day it was registered. I remember Tony brought the documents, those documents which were registered by the, the equivalent of URSB at that time. And we knelt down and dedicated these documents to God, saying that as this business starts, this is how we should start. And I also remember that the the first partners of the first business partners of, of, of Tony, one of them was an Indian who worships uh, uh, these other gods. And, the, and that person, that Indian also ha, was also in, with us when we knelt down to worship. And as we continued praying, somehow God managed to remove him out of the business. Without any contention, he was asked to leave and he left and uh, his shares were taken over. Ego Air started operations with, uh, with leased aircraft. aircraft. <clears throat> and you know, there have been so many things that have happened because of the of, of, of us having raised an altar because 
we have seen miracles upon miracles happen in, 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 in this company because of war. Because of what, uh, because of, the, of raising an altar. And uh, one of the first miracles that I can point to is that when Tony went to ask for, for, a, 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 for an aircraft to start operating with, it was given to him without even asking him to deposit any money because he did not have money at that time to pay. And the people who gave it to him knew that he would pay somehow. So he, he was given an aircraft and he started operating that aircraft and slowly he met his obligation of paying uh, for, for that aircraft. Then we acquired our first aircraft. And I remember the first aircraft we registered it as JNF. And JNF in full stands for Jesus never fails. And this has been our testimony. Jesus has seen us through many challenges. The industry that we serve in is dominated by foreign entities and the people who are in this business, usually they, they are funded. And 80% of these people are funded from, from other sources, but for Ego Air, they, we are not funded by anyone. We earn from the market and we, and, 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 and therefore you find yourself competing <clears throat> with people who have money, which you, 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 you do not have. But because we are people who believe in God, somehow God manages to use what we have to take us from one year to another. And that is how we have survived. And that is a miracle. The other one, one of the things that we have done as a business is when we attended Africa House of Prayer, I remember that was in 2006, they talked about raising altars. So we decided now instead of being, you know, um, just prayerful, let us have a dedicated altar for the company. And this gave rise to the altar that we set up both at the office and at home dedicated to praying for the company. Now, um, at this altar, all major decisions, we bring them before God and we ask him to tell us whether we should go through with that decision or not. Many times we have had people who come to join us and pray with us at the altar so that we are able to sustain this altar. But this, even when COVID came and we did not, we were not able to meet, we were able to sustain this altar as a family praying that the Lord will, will sustain us. Before any agreement is signed, before we enter into any covenant with anyone, we always bring those all agreements at the altar and we put them before God and ask him whether it would be okay to sign such agreements. And then when we don't hear anything, we go ahead and sign those agreements. Now, um, there's another uh, testimony I would like to give uh, on behalf of Tony. 
which is uh, concerning when a uh, time when somehow God told Tony that, sorry, when it, it was actually him who felt the need that for the company to progress, we needed an aircraft hangar. Now, an aircraft hangar is a place where aircrafts are maintained. Aircrafts are delicate machines. They are not supposed to be serviced in open air. So when this idea of having an aircraft hangar came to him, he brought it at the altar and we prayed about it. He did not have money. He did not have land where this aircraft hangar could be built. But then he went to Civil Aviation Authority and asked them for a place, a, a piece of land where he can build and hang. They offered him, they allocated him uh, land where to build and that place cost was costing $25,000. And that was a lot of money that is in way back in 2002. He did not have the money, but he brought that prayer that, that, that as a prayer point at our altar. And we prayed about it. Then he went back and asked them if they can allow him to pay for the hunger in installments, for, sorry, for the land in installment. And, and they accepted, which was a miracle in itself. So every year he, he would put there $8,300. And three years down the line, he had finished paying for the, uh, for the, for the hunger, yeah. for the plot. And when he managed to finish paying for the plot, he did not stop there. He went ahead and asked an architect to draw the, 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 the plan for that aircraft hunger. And this plan is, was equivalent to $4 million. Remember, he was looking for $25,000 to build, I mean, to, to buy the land. But now you have this building, which now costs $4 million, which you need to build, but you don't have the money. The full story of how he finally got around to building that hunger is long and we cannot talk about it in this meeting since we have limited time. But in 2006, we broke ground in Entebbe and we were lucky to have uh, the leaders of, uh, the, uh, of Africa House of Prayer around because that time Uganda had hosted the Africa House of Prayer. So we dedicated the ground for where the hunger was to be built to God. I remember it was an overcast day. We had set up a, a small tent there, but it was all looking gloomy. But as we started praying and calling upon the heavens to open up, there was literally the opening up, there was the cloud shifted and the sun rays, or the beams of the sun rays came straight down upon where we were seated. And somehow we felt in our hearts that God had heard our prayers and the hunger was going to be built. This didn't happen, but with time, the hunger was built and in 10 years, 2016, it had been fully uh, uh, built and, we, and it was one of those miracles that we saw that uh, God had done because we had believed in him. So when the hunger was finally built and completed, we chose one of the areas which the best area in the hunger and made it an altar. And it is now called the upper room where we go to 
to pray to God. When you are in that room, you can see the whole of Entebbe airport, the planes the landing and taking off, and, the, and you, can, you can view them from that place. And you are even able to pray into the gate, which is uh, which, uh, which our countries get in that place. So um, the challenges that uh, Ego Air has gone through, there have been many challenges because I remember when there was that uh, terrorist attack in 2001, all insurance companies raised costs and that did not, that also affected even the, the small company like Ego Air, which is far, very far away. And then of course, in 2009, there was the economic meltdown that also affected Ego Air, the entire economic, global economics where we went into a crisis. But because we had an altar, all these things we brought before God and God was able to hear us. Now in 2020, when COVID, there was this COVID-19 crisis, they grounded the aviation yes. industry. The entire world fleet was grounded. Now, this world fleet are the fleet which are sometimes supported by government and huge business enterprises. But you can imagine Ego Air, which is not supported by anyone, no government, no nothing, also had to be grounded. And for almost two years, there was nothing going on. And you have employees to pay. You have aircraft. You know, aircraft, you can't, you, you can't just pack them. They have to, to, to be maintained even when they are packed. So at that time, we also went back to God and told him, this is what is happening if you wish. For us, I remember Tony bringing this prayer clearly at our altar that if God, if you wish for us to wind up business, let us wind up. Show us how to wind up the business. But somehow, God did not say that we wind up business. Instead, he decided to let us start preparing. So we started preparing, making plans, and putting forth uh, you know, things which had, had been ideas, now trying to actualize them. And even today, he has another plan of uh, starting a cargo, a, cargo, um, a cargo airline, which is worth $300 million but uh, that money is not there, but it is something that we have also put to the altar because we know we have a big God. And, the, and since we have a relationship with God, we know that he, can, he is able even to handle those huge plans that we have. So, um, in a nutshell, I wanted to say that if you have a business and you are in the, the marketplace where you have people who have altars from different entities, you also need to have your altar from the God whom we serve. I mean, to have your altar with God whom you serve, enter into a strong, relationship with him and he will be able to support you even when you think you are not as empowered as all these other people. Lessons that we have learned over time is that as husband and wife, we are in partnership and we support each other. And for us to be, to be able to, 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 to survive, we need to have a healthy relationship. 
So we actually work on our relationship knowing that it will also affect us in business. And because we are together, we, we find it helps us in supporting each other because two are better than one. That is what the Bible tells us. So we are able to bring our requests together to, before God, but we are also able to challenge each other so that when, you, when, when Tony has an issue at work, he brings it and we talk about it. And uh, we like when we, we talk about it and pray about it, we are able to come up with solutions. When it is a stressful condition, we are also, you also are able to talk about it and pray about it. We have been able to bring complicated requests onto our altar. Like when you find yourself in like these days with like things like with people like you are a trying to come up with all kinds of claims which you find um, are, are taking away peace from you, you bring that those issues onto the altar and you pray about them. We also have audits like from the Civil Aviation Authority for from the international companies like the oil and gas companies, they bring about audits, trying to find a way of finding fault, but you bring those to the altar. And you find that even when people are looking for faults, somehow God is able to, to take you through such challenges and such audits. There are times when you find yourself, you have so many debtors and they are failing to pay. You find you have uh, creditors whom you need to pay. Sometimes there is absence of work. Sometimes you find difficult um, uh, public office officers who, who give you hard time, all those things, you bring them to the altar. So the, the, the benefit of the ben what I can call benefits of having an altar is having a place to run to, to talk to God and bringing all these things that affect your business to him. The other thing we do is to record all our prayers. We record each prayer request that we have. And when we go back over those recorded prayers, you actually see that, uh, see what God has done and how he has answered prayers. And in recording prayers, we also record prophecies. We record dreams. We record words of encouragement. And these are things which help us in our business when you you feel like you are ready to let go then you remember the prophecy or the word of encouragement that came to you and it gives you energy and impetus to go on so uh, um, for those in business i would encourage that we put we, we, we raise up altars in our offices we raise up altars in our homes to support each uh, to support the one in the office, and also to train the people who work with you to also know who is the source of your power. Because when we raise an altar, even the employees always come to that altar, so they are also aware the source of the the, the source of power behind the business and they can emulate that. Um, there's, there's one of Tony's uh, employees, a pilot, who said, I would like to start a business like yours, and I would like to do it like you, because I have seen how you do your business. So in, in, in doing what we do, we also are raising disciples in the business world. So that when they also start their own businesses, they will say, I saw what my boss was doing and I will also do it that way. And the other thing is when you, when, when you, when, when they've seen what you are doing, 
you also are multiplying the people in the business world who will not employ unequal skills because they know it does not benefit. And uh, with that, I would like to end my sharing and see if uh, Tony has anything to add, he can add, and then we can conclude. Uh, good morning, brethren. I think uh, uh, um, my dear wife has uh, summarized everything that we had on our hearts. I, I wanted just to emphasize one quick thing, and I won't be long. Um, the business world is uh, controlled by the forces that she has mentioned. Um, the forces, the satanic forces, and also the, 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 uh, the kingdom of God. Now, it is very hard for you to remain in between. Either you go to the other side or you come to the side of God. And uh, uh, that is why when you are in the business world, you will find that there are many people who go and uh, sacrifice to uh, other deities. And for that reason, it is a, like a war which you, um, you, are, you, you, are, you are performing. And for the most of the business is still being controlled by the satanic forces. But I would like to encourage you to understand that following the pattern that Doreen has uh, outlined, you can systematically bring your business to God. And we also know that the silver and gold truly belong to God. And at one stage, uh, the business world will be entirely uh, uh, dominated by the people of God. Um, I'd like to also emphasize the fact that <laughs> Ego Air for us has been um, a series of miracles. And uh, my wife has said, look, I'm going to write a book. And I said, okay, we'll put it together. And in that book, we'll give the full story of Ego Air. And I, with those few words and what Doreen has already said, I think we have spent about 40 minutes at it. And I would uh, suggest that if there is no, any questions and answers, this will be the right time. Thank you very much. Oh, over to you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to ask Special Za uh, to lead the Q and A. I was thrown off, off many times, but one thing I would like uh, Ton and Doreen to do is to switch on your video so some people don't know who have shared these wonderful nuggets. So can you switch on your video for just a little while for people to know you as brethren? Over to you, just and uh, Speciosa. Uh, thank, thank you, Phoebe. Yeah, thank you, Doreen and Captain Tony. <laughs> uh, you've blessed us so much. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you for what you've shared with us, the importance of having a, an, an, an altar at the workplace. Uh, to us members, if uh, participants, if anyone has a question to ask uh, kindly, just shoot up your hand and we hear your question. The Rubomboras are ready to answer our questions. Okay, there is a question in the chat room. Okay. Mm. And I'm going to ask Tony to answer it. It says, how did you know that God had called you to pursue business in the aviation sector? 
Um, I, I, I think to, to summarize that, uh, God was at the center of marriage. God was at the center of uh, our work. And uh, whereas the aviation industry wasn't well developed, when we went to work in Kenya, I was earning a good salary. I think at that stage, before I started Ego, yeah, I was getting like $6,000, a salary of $6,000. And we made it a persistent prayer saying, Lord, we would want to do what we are doing in Kenya back home. And uh, uh, then uh, with the story that Dorina has told you, um, we, we got an offer. A very wealthy man who was connected to power in Kenya came, approached me and said, uh, I was told at this airport, that is the Wilson Airport, that you are a very dependable person. I'm starting a company and I'm going to buy four aircraft and I would like you to run it. But we had already prayed to God about starting here. Even if we didn't have much money, the conviction came to us that we must go back home. We must go and do what we are doing here at home. I told the gentleman that I'm honored that he had uh, invited me to run the company. And obviously my salary would have been almost double that, what I was getting. I told him I'm already committed, I'm going home. And you know, it's the conviction that you get that, that drives you. Because uh, many people thought I was crazy when I left a job to come and start a company where I was not earning a salary. And that conviction is born out of your relationship with God. And that is what defined uh, our decision so that we are able to come back to Uganda. I hope I've answered that question. The other uh, question I, I can see is mm, how do yes. you proceed? Mm. Can I read the question? Please do, yes, you read it. Mm. How do you proceed when you do not agree on an issue? Mm, yes, okay. Maybe I will answer that. Um, the, 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 the thing which we, 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 are, we are talking about here, which we have continually talked about, is when we have an, anything to do with the work, we bring it on the altar. And then also debate about it. And you know, when you have prayed about it and you have debated on the pros and cons, the issue of, agree of, of disagreement or agreement somehow fades off. I think if you tried it, you will see that it actually works. And then of course, there's someone who is more knowledgeable than another. And you, and, and, and you cannot start insisting on an issue when someone has more knowledge. You can only debate to concretize what you already know. And that's how I can, I, 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 I can answer that question. I hope it, 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 it's clear. Unless you have something like that. No, um, uh, sometimes uh, uh, when you don't agree, it's better to go back to the old and, and pray about it. And uh, um, there is also another element that uh, that God has, uh, uh, or a, a trait that God has placed in us. Uh, and my wife tells me that I'm a serial optimist. Yeah, because if I pray to God and I trust God is going to do something, even if we don't agree, I will probably decide. Let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and be optimistic and trust the prayer that I have committed. And then the results, the first results which come out of such a decision map out the way forward so that uh, uh, you, you are able to uh, cut short 
a, a, a course of a decision after seeing the preliminary results. But when the results uh, turn out to be in the positive, it can also be a way of confirming uh, that, um, um, that the decision you took was the right decision. It's also important to note that uh, prayer is constant. Eh? When you have something, it's like you have made a plan, then you, you need to constantly pray to bring your plan in line with the, 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 what you are pursuing in the plan. So you may find sometimes praying about something every day, every day for, for six months before you start getting good results. Um, I over to you if there's any other question. Yeah, uh, thank you, Tony and, and Doreen. Uh, someone in the chat is saying, our first speaker, the, I mean, the, uh, our second session was uh, working with non-believers and Uncle David uh, in, uh, spoke so well how, we, we, how working with non-believers is an opportunity. So someone is saying here, how did you incorporate the altar at the workplace as in the merging of the different, oh, no, no, no. There was one talking about working with non-believers. Okay, it is here. Um, uh, having learned I, I, that we should be open to work with non-believers, how does your setting up? Oh, I'm not seeing the some first, of the things. The, the fundamental thing yeah. about, uh, mm. sorry, the, uh, uh, the fundamental thing about uh, businesses and life is that the people belong to God. People are not yours. The people are God's people. You are custodian of a company. And as we go along, it's our regular prayer to pray for the well-being of uh, our staff. It's also uh, for, for our suppliers, uh, surprisingly, a, a, a man, an English man, uh, called me. He used to be my insurance broker and uh, told me, Tony, I know you are a man who fears God. I'm going to go for a brain surgery. I would like you to pray for me. That was long after we had, uh, uh, I had been working with him. He had retired about five years or so. So you pray for the suppliers. You pray for your creditors, uh, for your debtors to pay up. You also pray for your staff. Uh, our recent prayer, for example, is that the, the, there is an economic crisis going on and uh, the amount of money we're giving the staff may not be sufficient, but we pray God, to, uh, we pray to God that uh, whatever we give them uh, is uh, enlarged, is sufficient to meet all their needs. Now, in the process of praying and making clear how you do what you do, you are actually testifying to that non-believer. And one day, a prominent man came to our house and uh, and then uh, after having our sharing, he said, now I know where my son picked up faith in God. Because when he came to join ego, he became, uh, a, a, he started becoming a good Christian. Now I understand where he got that from. And if you look behind us, there's a picture on the wall that man is one who gave us this picture when he came back and he said uh, that he was very grateful that we mentored him. He's no longer with us, but he's very senior where he is. Over to you now. Do you make it, do you, the prayer altar, do you make it compulsory for the, all the staff or they come willingly? Oh. The prayer altar is not compulsory. It is voluntary. 
unlike many companies, we make it voluntary because sometimes if you make it compulsory, uh, some people might uh, even imagine that uh, you're trying to convert them to your religion because we have people from um, all Christians, but from different uh, denominations. And in time, they all start coming in and believing. I think uh, that uh, what you do will uh, quite easily testify to the people that you are leading. Over to you now. <clears throat> wow, what you do testifies to the people, testifies to the staff. That mm. is so profound, yes. Uh, thank you, Tony and Doreen. Let me see if there's any other person who wants to who wants to ask a question. Any other question? Uh, Phoebe Sevume, over to you. <laughs> yes, Phoebe. Yes, I want to ask, and uh, uh, you know, altars, uh, workplace prayer altars need discipline. How do you discipline yourself and your staff in terms of how much time do you commit to the prayer altar so that you know this is prayer time, this is work time? I want to know about the discipline of prayer in the workplace situation. Thank you. Let's put it this way. We, uh, for us, we have an altar. Uh, a family altar uh, uh, at home. And we have established the altar in the office. The altar in the office is uh, in, in leadership of the altar, we make it open to the staff, different staff come in and lead the altar. Sometimes our, even our children get involved when they are working with us. So uh, I don't know whether you would call it discipline or it's uh, uh, for us something that you set up. And even if you don't attend, for us, we have our altar at home, which is very active. And for us, our altar here is uh, between uh, 5.45 and uh, 6.45 in the morning. And then there's a dedicated day of prayer, which is for ego air. Also, which we perform here. We know there is a prayer altar in a Kampala office, and we know there is a prayer altar in an Entebbe office. These are run independently by the staff because sometimes, or many times, I'm not you know, on time. Like today, uh, there is uh, is there an altar day in Entebbe for the staff they may be able to begin before I get to a table. But um, uh, to ensure that uh, the staff are encouraged to have uh, the altar or own up to the altar, they participate in the altar. And then also uh, we time and again tell the staff that they need to have their own family altars active as a way of strengthening the altars. And I believe there is an interconnection between the different altars that you have. I hope that answers your question, Francesca. Yes, thank you so much. Someone has said here, have you ever thought of quitting? If so, how did you overcome the urge to give up? Uh, I, I think that, that there is a, a long story of that, and I don't think uh, I, I think I'm in a position to uh, to to give the details. But sometimes it does happen that the, the pressures are so much that you ask God, "Is uh, is this really my portion? Uh, is uh, is uh, the pressure of work going to?" derive us of peace. And 
I'll tell you in a miraculous way, a message comes from, uh, from outside. Uh, one good example I can remember, uh, of when we were celebrating 25 years, we had uh, uh, three people, men of God, who came to join us. One of them was uh, Pasalaban Jumba, another one was uh, Dr. James Magara. And out of the blue, uh, a message came. It was delivered by Dr. Magara. And in his message, he was saying, uh, at 80 years old, Joshua took over the responsibility of leading the children of Israel. And he mentioned that perhaps if you are thinking of uh, retiring, maybe this is the time God wants to take you further. And that we record and we not. And it has given me a few more years. But at the end of it all, we're working for God. And God will determine when we are ready to come over. Over to you now, Steve. Have you faced the challenges of being asked to give a bribe? And how did you deal with it? Uh, the, 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 the bribes, I'll tell you what, what used to happen. I, I don't know whether we're not overstepping our time, but uh, uh, being a long story, I'll just try and cut it short. In the years 2001 to 2010, uh, there was a lot of activity and in the offices people were involved in uh, in uh, asking for commissions you'd uh, get situations like a person walks into the office and says here's a, a check of 50 million shillings yeah you take it and cash it give us half we give you and you retain half and it's written in the names of, from a company to Ego Air, because people wanted to eat money. And I told them, no, I will not do that, but I will credit it. For every flight you have, I will debit the money and I will give you the normal commission of 10%. And in such a case, the man walks back with his check. And then uh, the staff, we used to do customer feedback and the staff would go around and tell the, to the clients and the clients say, ah, at Ego, we can't eat because they cannot manipulate you. So we had to come up with a, a, what you call a standard commission. And we would tell the clients that this commission is declared to Uganda Revenue Authority. We will give you a 10% commission but we will also declare and we demand that you give us a document that you have taken the commission. But when the pressure was too much, we would tell the clients, no, you go through travel agents because the travel agents will give us what we want, then they will appropriate what you want. And that's how we actually dealt with most of such cases. And in time, it, uh, it does backfire if you do take those bribes. Oh, wow. And that explains how we have to deal with such cases. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you so much. I believe the person who asked this has, uh, has, has gotten an answer. Thank you so, so much, uh, the Rubomboras, for sharing with us uh, how altars are important at the, at the workplace and the benefits of a prayer altar. Thank you. I believe you have even spoken to the marriage that are on this, on this platform, that the relation, in order for the business to work, your relationship should be good with one another. I think that, is, that one stood out for me. <laughs> I believe the married people have captured that. If you are in business, make sure that you are in good relationship with one another so that it doesn't affect the business. Thank you so much, Doreen and Tony. We bless you, uh, the name of the Lord and may the Lord bless Ego Air. I've, been, I've, I've benefited from Ego Air. 
I, <laughs> and so often I pray for Ego Air. We pray for Ego Air at Intercessors for Uganda. So thank you so, so much. Uh, I don't know whether Phoebe, Phoebe, do you have any announcement you want to make? All I go ahead. Um, let, let Derek can screen. Uh, I just want to remind us that um, Intercessors for Uganda is supported by you, good people in business and workplaces. And if you have been touched and you want to bless the ministry, especially the business department, AKBF, which has sponsored, you can, um, you can uh, send your money through the various platforms uh, which are going to be displayed and indicate AKBF, if you, uh, that specifically for AKBF, if you want to or even if you send it generally, it will still work to fathom the kingdom of God. Those are, are our giving platforms, the bank account and the mobile account numbers. Uh, thank you so much. We want, we want to be disciplined on time. We need to close and Father, we thank you so much for the Rombras. They are a testimony to the business world, but they are a testimony to us Christians. Maybe we have shunned business. Maybe we have feared to take on that challenge. Thank you for the life you have taken them through. Somebody wrote in the comment, 10 years of waiting. Some of us have not waited that long. Some have been impatient and some have faltered. Lord, we ask that whatever we have done along the way in the area of business, we ask that you forgive us and give us a start um, or improve where, where we, we are right now in our businesses, oh God, that what we are learning here today, it may not be just book material, but nuggets which we are going to use in our workplaces, especially in the area of the altars. Forgive us where we have neglected the altars in our businesses where they are situated all of our God. I pray that you help us. We ask for mercy. We pray for the Rubomboras today as they have shared. They have given us so much. We pray that Lord our God, you extend their boundaries. Uh, you make them the Zebluns, that there will be merchants at the sea uh, as they, they are stationed at Lake Victoria. Lord, they will look further and further, and we pray that you fathom this ego air, that there will be ego saints in business, that they will take you'll take this business to higher heights than never before. We bless your holy name. Bless everyone who has come, uh, who has been, who has signed on on this uh, platform, and we pray that in their financial status, they will also soar. They will also be like egos they will soar and they will come back to give testimonies like uh, the Rubomboras have given us. We bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you. Amen.